Zener diodes are really useful components. They can be used in a whole host of circuits. Possibly one of the most familiar is the simple shunt regulator, but they can be used in many, many other power supply circuits for over voltage protection, for clipping, and many other things as well. So in this video, what I'm going to do is to explain how the Zener diode can be used in a shunt regulator. We'll show you how to design that and also be able to tailor it to your own needs for whatever circuit you might want, might want to use. And I'll also explain how it can be used with various other components to extend its uh, functionality for its output levels and, and the like. So sit tight and we'll get started. The basic Zener diode or voltage reference diode uses its reverse breakdown characteristic. It performs like almost any other PN junction diode in its forward direction, but in the reverse direction it breaks down and gives quite a stable voltage regardless of the current drawn. More information about uh, the Zener diode itself can be found on a companion video about the Zener diode on our channel. A link can be found in the description. Let's now look at the most basic Zener diode regulator, and later we'll look at some other interesting circuits. But the basic circuit is a shunt regulator using a single resistor and diode in series. The power is applied to the top end of the resistor and current flows through it and into the Zener diode, which is reverse biased, so it breaks down to give the steady voltage. The output to the load is taken from the junction of the resistor and the diode. Any variations in the load current will be taken up by the diode as it will always retain the same voltage across it. So for our design example what we'll do is assume a 12 volt input and an output of 5.1 volts. 5.1 is actually quite convenient because that's where a, a standard value for a Zener diode sits. And we'll also uh, use the figures of the load requiring between 5 and 6 milliamps. So let's get started with our design and see how it all goes. The first stage in the design is to work out the voltage drop across the resistor. This is simply the incoming voltage minus the Zener diode voltage, which is 12 minus 5.1, which is 6.9 volts. But to simplify the calculations, let's say it's 7 volts. Next, we need to work out the current going through the resistor. This must be sufficient to enable the Zener action to occur with the diode, often about 10 milliamps is a good starting point. Also, it should be able to supply the load and accommodate any variations in current that may occur. Knowing the current for the diode is 10 milliamps and there's a maximum of 6 milliamps for the load, the total becomes 16 milliamps and now it's possible to work out the value for the dropper resistor. Using Ohm's law, the resistance is equal to V upon I, and this is 7 divided by 16, dropping in the values, which is actually 7 divided by 16 times 1000, as all variables should be in amps and volts. This works out to be 437 ohms. In order to ensure that there's always enough current, let's go for the nearest preferred value lower than the calculated results, and this will be 390 ohms. Now let's just rework the current to make sure everything's going to be alright. The current is V upon R, again using Ohm's law, and this will be 7 divided by 390, and this works out to be 0 0.0179, or just under 18 milliamps. Now we need to check that the heat dissipation levels are all okay. For the resistor, we can use the formula that power is equal to V squared upon R. So let's pop the values in and we get 7 squared divided by 390 equals 49 divided by 390 and this works out to be 125 milliwatts. So we need to choose a resistor with a dissipation value of around quarter or half a watt to ensure we run it well within its limitations. We also need to check the dissipation in the Zener diode. We know that the current flowing in the resistor is 18 milliamps and the current flowing in the load is between 5 and 6 milliamps and this means that the maximum current that will flow into the Zener is 18 minus 5 or 13 milliamps using the highest dissipation level that it should experience. To calculate the actual heat dissipation, we have both the voltage and the current for the Zener, so we can use the formula power equals voltage times current, and this works out to be 5.1 times 13 milliamps, and that equals 66.3 milliwatts. 
So we need to select a diode that can safely dissipate this level of power. In fact, most small leaded Zener diodes have a four or 500 milliwatt power dissipation, so we're quite safe. But it's always best to check the specifications for any components in any circuits you're using to make sure they're up to the job. So that's the basic calculation required for the simple Zener diode shunt regulator. Now let's look at some circuits that use this basic block. It pops up in many designs and it can be used on its own or the output capability is often increased by using it to control a transistor emitter follower or similar FET circuit. When doing this, there are two points to remember. First of all, the current drawn by the base of the driver transistor will be the output current divided by the transistor current gain. So the resistor value will need to be configured to accommodate this, whatever it might be. Also, the output voltage will be 0.6 volts or thereabouts lower than the Zener regulated voltage because of the base emitter voltage drop of the transistor. So for a 5 volt line, you might choose a 5.6 volt Zener, and this will give an output of about 5 volts, which should be ideal. If you need a greater output capability, you could also use two transistors to get a much higher level of current gain. This current gain will be the product of the individual current gains of the two transistors. But don't forget that this time there will be two base emitter voltage drops. So that's our quick rundown of the simple shunt regulator circuit, and I hope you found it useful. But if you need any more information, head over to the description where there's more information and links. And please don't forget to watch more of our videos and also like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.